Today is Friday, February 23rd, and it is the official release day for Into the Inklands, Disney's Lorcana's third set. Before I go ahead and start posting new content, I just wanted to document what the deck that I used was in the Rise of the Floodborne meta, and it was Ruby Amethyst. So let's quickly break this down so we can start moving on to the new meta. This is just for documentation purposes. So I did run four Minnie Mouse Always Classy. This is the one drop one three. Very critical to see either this or Olaf, which is also a one drop one three. On turn one, that's why we played eight, because you always wanted to try and curve into your Madam Mim Snakes here. And these were a very powerful card on turn two because it is a two drop that is a three three body and you bounce your one drop back to hand, which then you can use as an ink resource. Very strong card. In the two drop slot, in case you didn't have the Madam Mim Snake, we also played Cusco. This was a very important card in the mirror match because it was essentially pressure on your opponent for one lore that when it got banished would also get you a draw card. So you can establish this and not worry about getting be prepared or anything later on, or even if it got taken out because you knew it would replace itself. My one tech card for the local meta was one Magic Broom. Because wheel decks were quite popular, in case I lost one or two be prepared, it's just having this in the mid or late game to be able to put back a be prepared that I could draw into later on was very helpful. I was playing four teeth, but I cut it back to three since aggro kind of fell off out of the format. You didn't really see any um, uh, Amber Amethyst uh, aggro decks all that much towards the end of the format. So three teeth and ambitions were good enough uh, to kind of handle early game aggro if you did run into it. We only played three Maleficent Sorceress since Merlin Rabbit was the preferred card of choice in the end. This was usually just ink if you had a rabbit in hand as well because you'd rather play that on turn four. But if you had no other three drop, this of course was still very good to play in order to draw you a card. Next up, we have four Madame M Snakes, and unfortunately, I am missing one foil. Uh, I could get it, but I'm not sure if I want to pay the $10 for the fourth one just yet. Probably will, though, but this is one of the only non-foils in the deck. But Madame Mim Fox, one of the best cards in Amethyst as of Rise of the Floodborne. You play this, you bounce a resource back to hand. It's a 4-3 overstated body for three. It's still quest for one, and it has rush, and it's inkable. So much to do with this card. It is fantastic. Also rounding out the three drop slot, we have four mini mouse stylish surfer. And this was essentially the go-to card. Whoever saw this first in the mirror match usually won the game if it went unanswered. Very powerful card, very good and against slower decks as well. Against the aggro matchups, you'd usually just ink this or if you were behind on tempo and you just had to try to catch up. So it was a great card all around quest for two or it was just an ink resource. Then of course you have one of your most powerful draw engines in the deck and one of the best draw spells in the game in Friends on the other side at four. It's pretty self-explanatory, a song that can be sung um, and draw two. I kept one copy of Spellbook in. Um, I kind of debated playing two or playing zero, but in the end I settled for one. So in the mirror match, you know, if you see this, it's really good pressure on your opponent. It really puts them on a timer. In other matchups, especially against Steel, where they play a lot of Benjas, this is essentially a dead card. And against Aggro, it's a dead card since it's not inkable. That's one of the reasons why you don't want to play it. Because the mirror match was so common, Peter Pan Shadow was one of my tech cards of choice. This thing gives the Madame Mim uh, Fox evasive so i can deal with the mini mouse as well as your mauis and at a two three body that quest for two it's also half decent basically just more copies of mini mouse then of course you have your merlin package you have your four goats and i only opted for three rabbits in the end um kind of controversial going back i probably would end up putting in the fourth rabbit here um but i opted to only run three probably should have run four though the card ended up being very critical um, no explanation needed there for those cards. Gain lore when it joins and leaves play for the goat and draw cards when it joins and leaves play for the rabbit. In the five drop slot, the only thing we have is the three Mauis. So once again, if you were going um, against non-mirror matches, you might want to up this to four. But in the mirror match, this card can be a little bit of a liability so i do have the fourth one here but i never opted to play it um really all that much i like the three ratio lady tremaines i bounced between two and four even debated cutting them completely in the end i settled for two because people were starting to play around this quite heavily you know pairing their big bodies with one drops in order to protect it and then of course you've got your big hitters in the four be prepared no explanation needed there you once you get up to the seven ink, the threat of be prepared is always looming. So your opponent has to be very careful with how they play, trying to bait it out. 
I only opted for two Ursula instead of three because I also wanted to play the one Elsa. I think this card is a fantastic tech card to use because with the Mim cards, you can bounce this back to hand, protect it, recast it, and utilize it as needed. So that was our late game package there. And then the only other non-foils in the deck, just because I have one, but I don't want to play it because it's probably the most expensive non-foil I have, or, or foil that I have, in the Maleficent Dragons. Yes, I did still opt to play them. I know there are builds without them, but I just think in the grind game, in the late game, having this card can make the difference between winning and losing because not only does it help take care of a threat when it's played, but it also quests for two, and at five toughness, it can be very difficult to out. It is still a very good card. So that was our deck. Um, shout out to some tech options, though. You know, the extra spell book or the extra um, rabbit. And then other tech cards that I experimented with were like crabs, of course, uh, Pinocchios, maybe another broom, and of course, a Maui. And that rounds out the deck. So that was Rise of the Floodborns format. On to Into the Inklands we go.